a group of people on Reddit drove up stock prices. Wall Street called it market manipulation. But Wall Street has been doing it themselves for a long time. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark Alert. It helps detect if your private information has been leaked online or is part of a data breach. So, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of media stories about stock traders on Reddit, particularly the Wall Street Bets subreddit. They drove up the price of certain stocks, like GameStop, at the expense of hedge funds who were betting on the price going down. For more on what happened, check out our episode about that. But if you've only heard the story through the mainstream media, you'd think that Reddit's profane and greedy traders are shaking up the stock market, which they do from a dingy corner of the internet, soaked in profanity, bro-speak, and greed. You might even say they're using their collective power to manipulate the stock market. But the stock market has been manipulated for a long time. Akinezda has more. Thanks, Chris. It's been heartbreaking to see so many traders driving up the price of stocks, hoping that they make money while other people lose. I'm, of course, talking about the hedge funds, who've been doing this for years. There are a lot of types of hedge funds out there that invest in all sorts of things, and government regulators give them a lot of leeway. One classic type of hedge fund hedges against the stock market through buying long in some stocks and short selling others. Buying long is when you buy a stock in a company hoping the price will go up. Short selling is when you borrow the stock with a promise to pay it back later and you're hoping the price will go down. There's nothing wrong with doing this and hoping the stock prices go your way. But in reality, a lot of hedge funds don't operate on hope any more than politicians run on integrity. If stocks aren't moving in the right direction, some hedge funds will try to solve that problem. Now, there are all sorts of academic papers on this, asking whether hedge funds manipulate the market. The answer, by the way, is yes. But don't take it from some 53-page paper you're not going to read. Take it from Jim Cramer, the host of CNBC's Mad Money. My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. And he knows all about the playing field because he used to be a hedge fund manager, the kind that did a lot of short selling. Here's Jim Cramer in December 2006, back when people thought that interviews you did on the internet would have only a small audience. He talks about how hedge fund managers can drive the price of a stock up or down. You know, a lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, similarly, if, uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are, they're higher. And maybe commit $5 million in capital to do it and I could affect it. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe, it probably is a bigger market now, maybe you need 10 million in capital to knock this stuff down. But it's a fun game, and it's a l lucrative game, and you, you can move it up and then fade it. That often creates a very negative feel. So let's say you take a longer term view intraday, and you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures, and then when the real sellers come in, real market comes in, they're going to knock it down, and it's going to create a negative, uh, negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing. When you're, when you're valued on a day-to-day -day basis. And I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal. Right. And it, uh, it is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Okay. Um, well, oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. That's right. And you can say that here. I can't. I'm not going to say it on TV. <laughs> Surprise, the internet is bigger than TV now. So what Jim Cramer is saying is hedge funds use techniques to drive up and down the price of stocks in a way that has nothing to do with the fundamentals of a company. It's just about using the mechanics of trading. You might think that's a bit unethical, maybe even manipulative, but that's not illegal. 
What is illegal is fomenting. Now, you can't foment. That's a violation of... of foment? Yeah. You can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So, you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. But a, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So... Um, this is different from what I was talking about at the beginning where I would be buying the cues and stuff. Right. This is actually just a blatantly illegal. But when you have six days and your company may be in doubt because you're down, I think it's really important to foment uh, if I were one of these guys. Hmm. So it's illegal to foment, but it's also really important for hedge funds to do it if they're in financial trouble. And I mean, it's hard to prove. Plus, the regulators, the SEC, are about as competent as Barney from The Andy Griffith Show. <laughs> Okay, so let's say I managed a hedge fund. It's December 2006, and I had short sold, I don't know, RIM. That's Research in Motion, the company that made Blackberries. Remember those? But I need the price of RIM to go down before the end of the quarter when I have to buy back the stock. But the stupid company is doing well, and the price is going up. What can I? a poor, innocent hedge fund manager do to foment and drive down the price. What I used to do um, was called, if I wanted to go higher, I would take and bid, take and bid, take and bid. Um, and if, um, if I wanted to go lower, I'd hit an offer, hit an offer, hit an offer. And I could get a stock like RIM for maybe, that might cost me 15, 20 million, uh, Annie, to knock RIM down. But it would be fabulous because it would beleaguer all the moron longs who are also keen on research and motion. So There's I see, a lot we're of that seeing, going on today. Yeah, we're seeing that. That's, you know, again, when your company's in a survival mode, it's really important to defeat research in motion and get the Pisanis of the world and the people talking about it as if there's something wrong with RIM. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo reporter on research in motion and you would feed that there's a Palm's got a killer it's going to give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. Yeah, if you can't figure out how to manipulate Bozo reporters to create a scare and artificially drive stock prices down, maybe you shouldn't be in the game, you moron. Now, what if you wanted to short, say, Apple before it puts out the next iPhone? Uh, another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, you Apple's very important to spread the rumor that, um, that both uh, Verizon and, Bell and uh, ATT have decided they don't like the phone. Right. That's a very easy one to do because it's also you want to spread the rumor that it's not going to be ready for Macworld. And this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't and it doesn't. Right, they're not going to comment. They're not going right, to. So it's really an ideal short. And I would again, if I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone, you call Six Trading Desk, and you say, "Listen, I just got off the phone with my contact at Verizon. He has already said, listen, we're not, we're a lucky G house." Uh, we're a Samsung house. We, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much. They, we're not going to let them in. This is not. We're not going to let them do what they did to music. And, you know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. I mean, sure, that could be effective. But are a lot of hedge funds doing this? Is this what's really going on under the market? Um, and these are all uh, what's really going on under the market that you don't see. Right, and, don't, and but, nobody else talks about right, it. Right, but what, what, what's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. Because the truth is so against your view right. that it's important to create a new truth to develop a fiction. And um, the, the fiction is developed uh, by almost anybody who's down like 2% to up 6% here. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up 6 Because starting Jan 2, you'll have all your money come out. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate is that you would do these actions? Okay, so the key is don't do anything truthful. Got it. But shouldn't you still invest long in good companies and only short sell companies that you think are legitimately going to go down? Isn't it ultimately about the fundamentals of each company? No. So you're talking about the mechanics of the market. Well, you know, the mechanics are much more important than the fundamentals. Oh, okay, well, but in terms of the fundamentals, you've been writing about how Who you cares think- cares about the fundamentals? Research and motion just blew out the court. Right. But look what people can do. I mean, that's a fabulous thing. The great thing about the market is it has nothing to do with the actual stocks. Right. I think it's important for people to recognize that the way that the market really works is to, is to have that nexus of, of hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press, um, and then get it on CNBC. That's also very important. 
and, and then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. It does sound like a pretty good game if you're a hedge fund manager. Now, are all hedge funds stock market manipulators? No, probably not. There are a lot of different types of hedge funds that do all sorts of investing. Kramer is talking about a specific type of fund that makes money from going long and short on stocks. And we don't know how widespread the practices he refers to are. But since at least some of these hedge funds have been doing it for decades without getting caught by Barney, I assume it's not a problem. What is a problem is people on Reddit and what they've been doing the past few weeks. They're encouraging each other to buy stocks and hold stocks. And that makes the price go up. These Reddits are basically using nothing more than the force of persuasion to, to, to sure. get everybody else into the leaking boat. Persuasion? Now that's what I call market manipulation. If only the Securities and Exchange Commission could step in and stop this atrocity. The SEC and NEC are playing catch a ball. They're always trying to figure out how right. to stop it. So eventually they will do something here and they'll come up with some laws or circuit breakers that don't allow this to happen. But that could take three to six months. It will so, eventually, I believe, stop and it should. It should stop because ordinary investors should never be allowed to influence the market. According to convicted felon Jordan Belfort, the actual wolf of Wall Street, the guy who went to prison for market manipulation. And if you watched Wolf of Wall Street, you know that's a place soaked in profanity, bro speak, and greed. And while CNN may like Jordan Belfort, I trust him about as far as I can throw a midget. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Matt. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark Alert. Big data breaches happen all the time, like the 2019 Capital One breach that affected 100 million Americans, or the 2017 Equifax hack that exposed data of nearly 150 million Americans. And when this happens, your private information can be exposed, like your credit card number, bank account balance, social security number, and more. If you're concerned about data breaches, identity theft, password leaks, or hackers, you should use Surfshark Alert. Surfshark Alert will notify you if your data is compromised. This way, you can change your passwords, close exposed accounts, or switch to new companies. And for a limited time, you can save 75%. You can get Surfshark Alert for only $3.19 per month, plus Get a free Surfshark VPN subscription, plus get three bonus months for both. To get this deal, go to surfshark.deals slash uncovered alert and use the code uncovered alert. Take control of your online security, monitor your credit cards, guard your email passwords, and go to surfshark.deals slash uncovered alert to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.